Hello and welcome to another video update for the Belmont Middle and High School Building Committee. I'm Diane Miller and I am here today with our chair, Bill Lavallo, and with fellow committee member, Jamie Shea, who also happens to be a teacher in the new building. So today we are going to talk about what is probably at the heart of this project, which is the classroom spaces. So we are standing right now in Jamie's classroom or shared classroom, I guess. Um, before we get into, before we dive into the classroom conversation, uh, we wanted to start off by saying that the classroom design has been really um, something we've given a lot of thought to over the course of this project um, in terms of the design. It was really a very collaborative process with our designers and with um, a lot of people in the education industry, right? With all the administration mm -hmm. and the teachers and faculty and staff. So a lot of thought has gone into these classroom spaces. So I'm very curious to hear today from Jamie how we did. <laughs> so, so, so Jamie, because you remember yeah. the visioning, right? Yes. That was so cool where people were sort of like, what they didn't like right, about the right, old school. Right. The, the old school was very time. dark. Um, <laughs> you know, the corridors were dark, the classrooms were dark, there were, the windows were small. Uh, so the, the best part about these classrooms by far is all of the natural light. I mean, it's bright in here, um, it's wide and open, and there's plenty of places to um, display student work, which I love to do. You can see our, our classrooms are full of um, student work. I think what's really exciting for me about this space is the flexibility of the space. So the furniture itself is flexible. Um, all of the desks are on casters, so it's very easy to move them. One of the issues that we had in the old building was that we had really old furniture. Some of the furniture were those old fashioned desks that had the chairs attached. So they weighed like 200 pounds. So even just moving, lifting them and moving them was hard. Some of the classrooms were actually carpeted. The classrooms and the mods were carpeted. So it was almost impossible to move that furniture. Um, this is easy. I can move the kids in desk groups of four, desk groups of three, pairs. I can put them in rows. Um, it takes like two seconds to move the desks around. You have enough space fantastic. for it too. A ton of space. Right. I mean, this sp space right here is 30 desks and the space on the other side um, also has 30 desks. There are 60 desks in total in this entire space. Um, this is actually two classrooms or an integrated studies space. And one of the most exciting things about this space is the ability to move the wall. So there is an accordion wall that comes out and closes to make two classrooms. And on the wall, the wall is all whiteboard. So there's also lots of room for students to get up and move around and write their thoughts on the board, um, put, do some work on the board. I can write on the board. And so it's a way to help students make their thinking visible, which is really, really important in a classroom. Um, additionally, it allows us to move the wall and create this double space for an integrated class that I teach with Mr. Moresco, Dan Moresco, who teaches math. I teach social studies. Um, this is his classroom side over here. And so when we have class during that period of the day, we move the wall. It's a double class. We have 45 students in here. Um, it's social justice by the numbers, so they're learning math and social studies at the same time. And in the old building, the only space that was big enough for our classroom was a science lab. And the science labs used to have um, fixed furniture in the back, like the science uh, desks and tables, and then they would have like desks and chairs, but some of those desks and chairs were actually bolted to the floor. They were the desk chair combo, which were hard to move. So it was really hard to put kids in groups, and we would have half the class in the back of the room and half the class in the front of the room, and it was just really hard to build cohesiveness. And you can see in this room, I mean, we have, you know, 12, 15 desk groups of four. We're all in the same room together. We have two smart boards that are movable so we can position them. We have the same lesson up on each smart board. So each smart board is on when we have all the kids in here so everybody can see the smart board from wherever they're sitting um, and it allows us to move around the room pretty easily. The wall is fairly easy to open and close. Um, and so when we're done teaching, we close it back up. Um, sometimes we can open part of it if, you know, sometimes when Mr. Moresco maybe has to run downstairs, if there's an emergency, we can open up half the wall and I can watch his class while he does that. Uh, we've been able to do that in the past as well. Um, the other amazing feature in this room are the light, the, all the outlets. There's outlets along all the walls, and we have outlets in the floor as well because the wall moves, and so it allows students that are sitting sort of in the center of the room to also have access to power. 
And because we have a one-to-one -one model here at the high school, kids are you know, constantly trying to charge their Chromebooks up or their laptops. And so in the old building, that was really complicated because in some rooms there was maybe one or two outlets. Um, so, and their, their cores were strung all across the room. So this is great. I mean, it's a great, great teaching space. We have plenty of room to, to store all of our materials on the counter and on the shelving. I have plenty of room to store student work and hang student work. Um, and I, you know, I think it's just been it's just been a tremendous upgrade from the old building. Well, let me ask you a few questions. Sure. How many of these combined classrooms are? I know the answer, but so there's five. There's one in every department. Every department space has a room like this. This room is the only op one where we're operating the wall every day because we do have a class that meets in here every day. So over 100 classrooms. The typical classroom is just the the one side. Correct. Uh, we know from the MSBA their standards were set. Right. The classrooms were set which were actually larger than what we had in, in the old school, uh, but they were not, um, we couldn't go beyond that. Uh, I think we petitioned a slight adjustment they allowed. So that's 30 feet by 30 mm -hmm. feet, which gives you uh, the flexibility you need. It's great. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I mean, and the I don't have any size that we have, right? We, 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 you say you have up to 30 students in a yeah. classroom that, that fits them. It's great. I mean, you can feel, I mean, we don't feel crowded in here. There are 30 yeah. desks in here. Yeah, so I remember when we were touring the old building, it yeah. was so, you're like, you couldn't even get couldn't in between the I mean, desks. I would trip every day because mm. the kids have their backpacks, backpacks and everything else on the floor. And it's like, it was a minefield trying to get around those classrooms. Right. So there's plenty of space in here. But our state partner uh, also dictated people say, well, the, the school is too large. No, it's set by the state based right. on the number of classrooms you need right. and the size of those standardized classrooms. Science, they're, they're larger classrooms right. by definition by the MSBA and again, uh, they're needed and, and uh, they're so awesome because yeah. they also have the flexible furniture. They now, do. Remember the old the old science rooms? You you mm. couldn't put desks. They had these real skinny desks right. to put between the fixed benches. Right now the benches are all on the sides. Right. Yeah. So and the, the lab tables are movable, so they can move them to the wall or they can move it into the front of the room. And so there's lots of flexibility in all of our spaces, which is fantastic because. This building needs to last for 50 years, and we don't know where teaching and learning is necessarily going, and so we need the flexibility to be able to have this space be as useful 25 years from now as it is today. One of the, in terms of flexibility, one of the things that I know we talked a lot about on the design end of things also was using the hallway spaces yes. um, and maximizing. So it's not just circulation between classes, but it's an opportunity for us to use extra space yeah. for breakout sessions and that sort of thing. Right. Um, and that kind of speaks to the MSBA and space requirements that we had and saying, okay, let's make the most of it. So I'm curious to hear how that's working out. So there is furniture in the hallways and it is all movable furniture. All, most of the tables in the hallways are also on rollers. So you'll see kids dragging tables down close to a classroom if they're doing, a, if they're like working outside of a classroom during a class time. There's also a lot of seating in the areas right at the tops of each stairs on each, uh, the stairwells on each floor where students you know, hang out during the freeze. They maybe eat lunch there. Um, they do their homework there. Um, I'm at the end of a hallway, so as the hallway goes down to the end, it gets a little bit narrower, but I still find that there's plenty of space. I send kids out into the hallway almost every day. I have students that have difficulty focusing in a classroom of 30 kids. If we're doing a writing assignment, I might have them go on the hallway where they can focus. Um, I've never had trouble finding space for kids. And you'll notice if you walk down in my hallway any given day, there's different furniture in different places. So the kids do actively move the furniture around oh, um, and great. use it the way they need to use it, which is fantastic. And Very Jamie, cool. the classrooms that were uh, arranged here by the administration, they're by by subject, by correct by, mm -hmm. by, for the most part. And, and then you share your teacher uh, resource areas. Correct. Too. So each department has a teacher planning space in the building that has um, room for each teacher to have a, a like a countertop space and um, lockable cabinets. And there's also a, like a filing cabinet that's on wheels that you can roll into your classroom if you want. You can roll it into your the planning space if you want. You can bring it with you around the building if you want to because that's all on wheels as well. So again, there's flexibility there um, too. And it's easier uh, to... It gives us more space to help sort of work with kids in the old building. Um, the planning space was also where teachers ate lunch, which was also where teachers um, stored books, which was also where teachers were trying to help kids. So there was always a lot going on. And there seems to be more room because when I need to work with a kid, if, I'm, if I, my classroom's open, I can work with them in my classroom. If someone's in here using my classroom for another purpose, there's tons of breakout spaces in the hallway that I can sit and work with students as well. I've never really had to sort of go and sit where my colleagues are eating lunch um, to work with a student. So that's been good. And so let's talk about some of the other spaces that we have, other learning spaces yeah. that we have as well. Um, 
in addition to the typical classrooms, we've got the robotic space, we've got the maker spaces, we've got some some really cool science labs. Um, How about art? Art, uh, yeah. You know, we we are, all of those the science, especially the maker space and art. Uh, the big focus was showing that off. Mm. So as you walk through the building, you see a tremendous amount of, of glass, glass around those right. because you're looking in on them, right. uh, which I think is really cool. Yeah, and I can tell you, so I'm on the fourth floor, and when I'm walking down, the, all of the maker spaces and the, and the art rooms right now are in the center of the building. So if I'm walking down the fourth floor, I can look down into the maker spaces. And can you define for some people watching, what is a maker space exactly? Because we're all used to that term. So but right it's now new. it's <laughs> mostly being used for 3D art um, because the art rooms are still under construction. They're part of the, the they're in the new middle school space. Um, but the maker space is typically going to be used for, I think, like engineering, um, robotics. We do have a robotics class here. Um, and the idea is that it's a wide open space that has access to lots of tools um, and other um, kinds of hands-on learning, which I think is fabulous for kids. So the more that we can create programming to fill that space once the art department is able to be in its permanent location, um, I think that's going to open up a lot of learning experiences and opportunities for students. So we are scheduled to finish uh, this coming summer. That's only a few few months away. If you think about it, now here it's we crazy. are beginning of twenty twenty three, and those art spaces are all on the first floor, yep. facing the pond. The pond, yes. Uh, and they're tremendous spaces in that they have natural light. You right. can mm. they have a door out to the outside if they wanted to use that. Uh, right. There's space on the outside if they wanted to have outside activities, and they also have class. So right. when you walk in on the middle school side, the first thing you're going to see is art, and it's middle school and high school art. Right. So. Uh, yes. So again, those types of spaces are, are all on display. And I think space. it's yeah. great also because in the old building, um, you know, the departments were pretty vulcanized. You know, they were very, very separate. And that's somewhat the case here, except now because of, their, because of all the visibility, I never ha ever went into an art room, I don't think, in the old building. And now I'm walking down the social studies hallway and I can look down and I can see what Jeanette English is doing in her ceramics class. And I can look over and watch the kids doing drawing and painting as I'm walking down. So it just... Then I might say to Danette during a faculty meeting, oh my God, I saw the kids building this really neat thing. What is that? So I do also think all of the visibility helps the faculty and staff and the students just sort of understand better yeah. everything yeah. that's going on in the, in the community that we're in. Getting them more engaged and, yeah. you know, oh, I want to do that. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah. What are you doing in there? Yeah. yeah. So one of the biggest things we invested in to make sure that, that works uh, was acoustics, to make mm -hmm. sure we had the right acoustics. How These classrooms we're talking so to. So right I never now. had a problem with acoustics <laughs> myself because I'm loud, but... Um, the acoustics in the classroom are really, really good. Um, I mean, I never have a trouble even hearing my quietest student. That's great. Um, I can hear. But them what well. you can't hear, at least what we heard from um, Emma, I believe, when we were, or right. from somebody on one of our other video updates, what you cannot hear is the train. Is I that right? I hear the train. So. And I was in the mods in the old building, so that train was very, I was well acquainted with the train schedule in the old building because it was about four feet from my window. <laughs> um, so that's been um, nice. And I will say that. There was one year where I did uh, teach with a mic, and it was so helpful. And I feel like that sort of sound, um, it's the same kind of sound quality in here mm. as when I was teaching with a mic in the yeah. old room. Because the old rooms were brick, and you know they, were, hard, they, would, yeah. they would absorb the sound pretty. And then you have the shades, and you talk about natural light, but the ability to, to darken the room for... The shades are, are really important. I'm on a side of the... I, I have a nice, beautiful, bright room because I get a lot of um, sun in the afternoon. But because the kids are using a lot of um, the time, they're using a laptop or a Chromebook, the glare can be tough to see. So the shades are fantastic. They they operate the shades themselves. They put them up and down as needed, whoever's sitting in the back of the room, um, so that they can see um, the smart board or they can see their laptop. And then, of course, we have connections through uh, Wi-Fi ports throughout the whole school. Yep. You never have yep. a problem with kids are never saying, oh, I can't get connected anymore. So, For the most part. For the most it's part. a hardware problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, though, right? yeah. So, so this is our... Uh, this is our the heart, as you said, of, mm -hmm. of the school, over 100 classrooms. Right. Uh, middle school classrooms are almost identical to this, yeah. a different color, but they're arranged 30 by 30. They have the teaching wall. You could move the classroom around. Yeah, something. I mean, I could create, because I actually have a smart board that's on wheels. Yeah. So I can turn it if I want to teach from a different area of the room also, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. And the middle, middle school classrooms also then have the breakout spaces in the hallways. Team. So there's a right. team of four cluster right. where, where all the social studies in the high school might be all together. Right. For You're right, for the middle school, the teams are broken up into a, a, you know, a science and a math and an English in one team right. for, for social studies. And they have an outside space that has lockers for them, I believe, yes. right? And a little mm -hmm. sitting Software area for yeah. them. So they, I think that's going to be fantastic. Right, so the scale of it feels a lot yeah. smaller exactly. because they're younger they're kids younger. so they don't feel like they're in a big building. Right. 
right? Yeah. Yes. My son is actually going to be here next year as an eighth grader, first eighth grade class. I'm very excited. Congratulations. That's awesome. yeah. So that's a typical classroom. There you go. Well, thank you, Jamie and Bill, and thank you for tuning in uh, for this conversation with us. We look forward to talking with you again about the Belmont Middle and High School Building Project.